just by way of recap, two major rules we've done so far. Slope of a DT graph is velocity, and the area, quote unquote, under a VT graph is displacement. Okay, so I want to deal with those. I'd like to draw a graph that helps us to handle that stuff. I want to have a vertical axis. Now, this vertical axis is going to be a velocity axis. And I'd like to have a time axis. You have to have a positive and a negative axis for this velocity time graph, because we're going to dip below the horizontal axis this time. Time in seconds. And again, just for argument's sake, not that we're trying to be too creative, let's do velocity in meters per second once again. And again, we'll let positive direction be north. I don't want to throw too many curveballs too quickly. And I want to lay this out. Try to space out your time intervals as best you can. I'm going to use a ruler. And there's going to be a total of six intervals. going all the way up to six seconds. And on the vertical axis, going in the positive direction, I want to give myself five intervals. So going up to five meters per second. And going downwards in the positive direction, or southwards, I suppose, I'm only going to go down four intervals. Four meters per second in the negative direction, or four meters per second south. As I plot out my data, let's, let's say that this is, uh, well, we don't have an object that's in motion yet. Let's say that we have a, uh, I don't know, a, a monkey on roller skates, okay? Monkey on roller skates gets from zero meters per second up to five meters per second, okay? Don't call the animal rights people. Zoom! One second up to five meters per second, okay? In one second. And then for the next two seconds, actually, you know, I don't want it to be in one second, that's too fast. Two seconds, in two seconds. I don't want to scare the monkey too much. Get it up in two seconds, up to five meters per second. Then for the next two seconds, we're gonna carry on at five meters per second, okay? So up to the four second mark at two, five meters per second. And then very abruptly, the monkey's gonna to come to a stop can you see that's what, why that, I can say that's a stop? Why am I able to say that the monkey is coming to a stop? Yeah? Well, not just that there's nothing after it, because there is going to be something after it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, it's gone down to the zero level, so zero meters per second. And now he's going to continue on, and for the next second, he's going to pick up speed, but going in the negative direction, that is south, and by the time one more second has passed, he will have gone, I've gotten up to a speed of four meters per second, but now traveling in the southern direction, okay? So if I'm telling the story of this monkey and his little uh, journey of terror, getting up to speed for the first couple seconds, five meters per second, coasting for two seconds, then abruptly, like within a second, stopping, and then starting to travel back in, its, in the opposite direction to which it started at four meters per second. Okay, so we might talk about, uh, well, if you could get a monkey to wear roller skates in the first place, then put the monkey into some sort of spring-loaded monkey launcher and launch a mar monkey forward at a sheet of glass. Can you imagine the monkey bouncing off the glass? But because of the elastic property properties of monkeys, it's going to take a second for it to sort of come down to speed and then reverse back in the other direction. This is a toy monkey, it's not a real monkey, okay? We're not going to do this to real animals. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like this could be a plausible path. It could be a car. Maybe you're in your, your driveway. You know, you, you're sitting in the driveway facing towards the house. You accidentally put it into drive. You go, 
vroom, rev the engine, bounce off the garage door, and then you're going backwards. Okay, it could happen that way too. So it could happen to any of us. It doesn't have to be monkeys. In any case, you're going forward at first, coast for a second or two, and then you bounce backwards, okay? After slowing down to a stop. What I would like to do is use the second rule and figure out what the displacement, the total displacement of this, let's call it the monkey. We'll go with our original story. What the displacement of this little monkey is in total. And so the nice thing about these nice geometric instantaneous graphs, the graphs where the motion changes instantaneously like this, is that I can break them up into geometric shapes. Nice geometric shapes. Now realistically, you and I both know that you don't instantaneously change your speed. There's sort of a curving off to a graph in the real world. But here in grade 11, we're going to idealize things a little bit. and We're going to have instantaneous changes in speed just because we're working with basic concepts. We're not going to lay out like the curvilinear graphs and things like that that we might look at at later grades. So I'd like to find out what the area, <coughs> pardon me, area, quote unquote, under the graph is. Now the reason I put it in quotes is area A, area B, and area C, sure, area under the graph, the language works. But area D is not really under the graph. So strictly speaking, when we say the area under the graph, we're talking about the area between the plotted graph and the horizontal axis. You see what I mean by that? It's the area between the graph and the axis. Not really under, but people use that language, under. Okay? So we can say that we're looking for delta D A, displacement A, displacement B, displacement C, and displacement D. You guys have the math skills to do this. Calculate the area of this triangle, rectangle, triangle, triangle, okay? You go for it. I'm just going to do a little bit of writing on the page here, and then we'll come together with our answers in just a minute, okay? Go. And you're looking for three displacements, that is, or sorry, four displacements, that is the displacement for four distinct legs of this journey. And when I say a leg of a journey, I mean a portion. You may not be familiar with that language, but the leg of a journey is a portion of a journey, a distinct portion of a journey. did forget, area of a triangle is one half base times height, just in case you forgot. I'm going to start taking shout outs. What's displacement A equal to? What's that? Five meters. I love it. Displacement B? Ten meters. Displacement C? 2.5? Yeah. And displacement D? Can we get two? Is that right? Negative. Oh, negative two. Thank you. I wasn't expecting people to catch that so quickly. You're right. It is negative two meters. Yeah, he's got it. Make his mom proud. Negative two meters. Absolutely. Why is it negative two meters? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, re really, truly, it's the south half of the axis. And if you've got a negative velocity that whole time, you better hope you're going to have a negative displacement. So it's good that you're thinking that way. So it's, we're not just finding areas, we're finding meaningful displacements here, right? So negative two meters, or two meters south. So we can plug in all of our values. Five meters plus 10 meters plus 2.5 meters minus two meters. Five plus 10 is 15, plus 2.5, 17.5 minus two. So we're gonna end up getting what, 15.5? 
and it's a positive value, so we could just jump to saying 15.5 meters north. And I haven't been too picky with the significant digits here. Really, we should be uh, two significant digits because this could be 5.0, 10.0, 2.5, and 2.0. So strictly speaking, we should be sticking to one decimal place because it's an addition problem. I'm not going to worry too much about that. We could find the displacement for this little journey. Now, I am not going to give you a lot of curvilinear graphs. I just won't do that to you. That's not really my aim to get you to wrestle with curvilinear graphs. What, what we will be tackling is more of these geometric instantaneous change type graphs. Um, I want to go back and look at this graph that we just talked about, though. Let's see what colors I've got available. Each of these guys represents having a certain uh, slope, I suppose. And if I were to talk about one of them as being uniform motion, which one would you think would, could be called uniform motion? A, B, C, or D? You know that song from Sesame Street? One of these things is not like the others. One of these things just doesn't belong. Which one is it? Yeah. B. Why? It's flat. Yeah, velocity's not changing. Or we could say there's no acceleration, right? No change in velocity. So this guy here, we might label up as being uniform motion. Some people may say constant velocity. And this guy here, we might say no, it's non-uniform motion. In other words, it's accelerating somehow. Got a negative acceleration of some, set, some sort. Now, the slope of a dt graph was velocity. What do you suppose the slope of a vt graph is, a velocity time graph? What's the slope of a velocity time graph, the rate of change on a velocity time graph? Kevin? Bingo. He's got it. Bingo was his name-o. So let's call that a rule three. Now, your rule three may be elsewhere, but I want to group my rule three up here with, groups one, or with rules one and two, just so that I sort of have them clustered together. I'd like to just make a note of the fact that slope of a VT graph is acceleration. Okay? And I'd like to label it as being A with an arrow. And if I'm going to come up with a formula for acceleration, following the same pattern, really acceleration is a rate of change of velocity over time. If velocity is a rate of change of displacement over time, the same pattern holds up for the formula, rise over run for a VT graph, would be acceleration equal to change in velocity over time. Okay, so we actually, just by making that statement, really come up with a brand new formula. So I want to I want to try and tackle just one simple calculation. I want to find the acceleration for leg A of this journey. Okay? That's going to be the final velocity for leg A, v2 for leg A of the journey minus v1 for leg A of this journey divided by t2 minus t1. And as I sub in my values the final velocity for leg A was 5 meters per second. Okay. The initial velocity for leg A was 0 meters per second. The final time for leg A was 2 seconds. And the initial time was 0 seconds. So this is actually kind of a, an easy one. There's a couple zeros that pop up. 5 divided by 2, though, is 2.5 meters per second, and we could say meters per second per second, or we could say just meters per second squared. Okay, and we've talked before about where that meters per second squared comes from. That would be our final answer. If we wanted to find the acceleration for this first journey, this part of the journey. Now the answer happens to be positive. Can you see that if we're, tra that we're traveling in the positive direction and getting faster and faster in the positive direction? It's a positive acceleration. 
The slope's also positive. I can just eyeball that based on my, you know, my earlier math skills from grades 9 and 10. What about this one here? Is this acceleration going to be positive or negative based on your earlier knowledge from grade 9 and 10? Yeah? Negative because it's moving in the opposite direction. Yeah. But it happens to still be moving north the whole time. But what's happening to its speed? Yeah, it's slowing down, right? So although it's moving north, the acceleration is working against it. So the acceleration must be negative. Now in this part here, you notice you're getting further and further away from the time axis, which means you're actually getting faster and faster. Your magnitude's getting bigger and bigger. But look at the slope. Is the acceleration negative or positive? It's negative. So you're traveling negatively and you're accelerating negatively. You're going to be getting faster and faster, but in the negative direction. Okay? Yeah? Uh, what do you mean by like the C is still going? Oh yeah, but this is maybe a hard, hard thing to wrap your head around when you're looking at a velocity time graph. Velocity time graph just tells me, if I read over, how fast am I going, how fast am I going, how fast am I going? And is it positive or negative fastness? And here I'm going fast, 5 meters per second, in the north direction. At this point here, I'm still going pretty fast, maybe 4 meters per second in the north direction. 3 meters per second, 2 meters per second, 1 meter per second, stopped. But the whole time, always going north. Just getting slower, 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 slower. And here, I'm going faster, 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 but going south. Because as I read over horizontally to the, the actual vertical axis, I see that I'm getting a bigger magnitude, but in the south direction.